Hello everyone, today I am here to talk all about House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. So if you don't know, Sarah J. Mass is a vastly popular YA author. This is her first foray into adult fiction. I knew without a shadow of a doubt I was going to read this because I have read every single one of Sarah J. Mass's books. If you're unfamiliar, she wrote the Throne of Glass series, which is a crap, seven or eight book series. <laughs> <laughs> that is a YA fantasy and she also has written a Court of Thorns and Roses series which is a it's technically a trilogy but there's also a novella so I'd say if you want to read the novella great if you don't I still count it as a trilogy and she's going to expand on that world as well and this is her new series entitled Crescent City that is an adult fantasy series has written YA fantasy and now she's writing adult fantasy I think everyone was very intrigued by her switching to fantasy or trying adult fantasy for a change because honestly her YA books, like sometimes borderline, like new adult in my opinion, or adult. You're wondering about how different is the writing and things like that in terms of her switching from, you know, YA fantasy to adult fantasy. Honestly, there's not that much difference other than the language. The language is very much more adult. So if you're really uncomfortable with swear words and things like that, you know, that's a big that's a big factor in this book. Also, there are some steamy times in it. There were steamy times in her YA books, like, that were very, like, I don't, like, that's why, I, that's the one part I was like, this is like adult books. So, honestly, there's less steamy times in this than, like, her, like, Court of Thorns and Roses series, in my opinion. I could be wrong, who knows, but either way. So, you know, there's not that much difference as far as the switch from Y to fantasy other than the language, also the steamy time. Other than that, it's really similar. Her writing style is very similar, things like that. So yeah, um, what this book is about, I'm gonna try my best to explain it. I love fantasy novels. I'm never good at explaining them, so please forgive me if I do not do it justice because I, I'm gonna really try, but that's all I can promise you. So her new series, um, Crescent City, is an urban fantasy series, and what that means, I googled it, because I want to make sure I'm correct by saying this. Um, it's a subgenre fantasy in which the narrative uses supernatural elements in an urban society. Where urban fantasy may be set in the real world and introduce aspects of fantasy or in a fantasy world with operating roles represent recognizable similar to ours. I think it's both honestly. I mean in this book the characters have cell phones, they get cars, they, they can taxi, things like that, but there's so many supernatural elements in it. So honestly I'd say it's like, you know, a regular world with a ton of supernatural stuff in it but Crescent City is very different so either way it's like modern times in my opinion or like in the future this book is way in the future but it's like you know similar to our world somewhat text better things like that but with a ton of supernatural elements so in this book we follow a character named Bryce Bryce is a half human half fae she has a bad relationship with her biological father that no one really knows about. Her mother is human and she lives in Crescent City and she works at this place that's like a gallery, almost kind of a library. She meets with clients, she tries to sell them things. Her um, boss is like a, a sorceress, like she is insanely powerful and she just really hates her job. She loves her life. She has a best friend named Dika who is the like the leader of the wolf. She is a werewolf and I love that. Um, she's like the pack leader and they are just like best friends, sisters, things are going good, you know, Bryce, you know, works all day, she parties all night, and then when she comes home one night from partying, she discovers that Danica and all of her pack have been murdered. This is obviously very desolate, so the beginning of the book starts with that. I'm not spoiling anything for you, it tells you in the very beginning that the demon, a demon murders her friend. It's, um, and the very beginning of the book that happens and then we kind of jump in time to like two years later I want to say or 22 months later something like that and we kind of pick up the pieces and what we thought we figured out who had like set the demon is behind bars turns out it was not that person so now Bryce has been tasked by like the arch, like the big angel of them all. I'm so sorry, I'm not doing this justice. He designed her to find Danica's killer. He wants to find her killer because he wants to figure out what's summoning this demon, things like that. So that is her job. She's paired with Hunt, who is an archangel, which means like he was an angel, didn't agree with the hierarchy, and he kind of rebelled, and now he's like a slave. Like he has a slave tattoo, he has to listen to um, the pack, um, he has to listen to the boss, who is also making. Um, Bryce find the murder so they appear together and they are reluctant because they get along well at all. So this whole book is basically like a fantasy with a really good 
like murder mystery in it, which I was there for. I, I love this book. I'm not going to lie to you. I devoured it. I actually had to read this book in six days because the readathon was starting and I was like, I have six days to read this. I need to finish it. And I was worried, but I flew through all eight of her pages. It's like, good. I don't know which is my favorite series. I really do love A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I love the first two books in that series. Did not like the third book. Throne of Glass, I do really love, but there are books in it that I just don't like. I, I love this book. I gave it five stars. I know a lot of people are going to give it five stars. A lot of people are going to get one stars. It's your own opinion. I enjoyed it. I love that it was an urban fantasy How We had so many supernatural elements because... Sarah J. Mass's books, you know, they have witches usually, they have a lot of fae. It's very fae heavy, and this one kind of is as well. But this book has a whole bunch of other things. We have werewolves. I loved reading about the dynamics of werewolves, and I was so excited because werewolves. We also have vampires. I'm hoping vampires come into play more because your girl loves some vampires. We have fae. We have sorcerers. We have just mer people. Like, there's all of these, um, Pe like all these supernatural elements melted into this one city because in the very beginning of the book you get this great map you know a fantasy book series when a got map in it and the city's just divided into different sections like the five roses moonwood means like that's like the werewolf's place um meat market i think oh i can't forget i forget that's like the where the bad people are the central business district i think that's like where the angels are um the bone quarter is like where demons and hell resides and then you also have like um a place to the river where the mer people are things like that um yeah at, at salvador meadows um and then you also have a whole bunch of humans living in this world and a whole bunch of half breeds so this book yes is urban fantasy but it does touch a lot on the hierarchy especially when it comes to like this book like if you're not 100 percent full blood werewolf you're, or if you're not 100 percent full blood fey like you're looked down upon you're like a half breed you're not good and that's what like hunt's trying to fight against um but either way, this book was really good. I love the relationship between Hunt and Bryce. It was a hate-to-love relationship, which is my favorite thing ever. That's my favorite romantic trope. There was tons of sexual tension. There was steaminess. But I also really loved that, you know, they both cared about each other. And I'm having such a hard time because Sarah J. Mass, spoiler warnings right now, for both um, Throne of Glass and for A Court of Thrones of Roses. So if you don't want to hear about the ships in those two books, please um, mute until like I tell you not to, until I give you a thumbs up, okay? So yeah, spoiler warnings right now for both of those series ships because I don't want to spoil it for you. So what I get worried about <laughs> with her ships is because Throne of Glass, I was like, the first two books, I'm like, oh my gosh, Shalana and Kale for together forever. Nope, wasn't the ship at all. She redirected us. Same with Court of Thorn and Roses. In the beginning book, we thought Farah and Tamlin. Nope, redirected us completely. So she has a tendency to not start off with the end game relationship. Let's just say that. So I'm so loving them, Hunt and Bryce together, but I'm so apprehensive because I'm like a Sarah J. Mass gonna pull a fast one and be like, this isn't the, the guy for her. I was just letting you like him a little bit till the real guy came in or girl, whatever. So I'm just, oh, I like them so much, but I'm trying not to because I know Sarah J. Mass and she does that frequently. She's done it with two of her series already. This is her third series. Is she gonna do it again? I freaking hope not because I think they're both amazing and I think they'll have great qualities and they're just great together. So don't do it again, Sarah Dumas. Keep them together. Do not introduce a new character. I don't want another love triangle or, you know, a completely different relationship. Let's just keep it this one, okay? <laughs> Spoilers over for that series, so sorry. So yeah, I told you what the book is about. I gave it five stars, like I said. Um, my review is I think it's a great book, especially if you're transitioning into YA fantasy to adult fantasy. I've read a few, like by a few, I mean literally three adult fantasy books. So I am clearly and evidently a novice when it comes to adult fantasy. But I really grasp this. I think especially if you've read Sarah J. Matz's YA books, you're going to really find her adult book very, very easy to read. I just loved the characters. Bryce was an amazing character. She was very hard-headed. Most of Sarah Mass's main characters are kind of, they're not nice, I <laughs> should say that. Like, Selena, it's probably my least favorite main character. I don't know, she's just so snarky and so arrogant all the time. And it's like when you see glimpses of the real her, it's like, there you are. Like, you, you could be nice sometimes, but it's just, I feel like she's always putting on a facade. 
that could just be me. I do like her. I just, she just don't love her. Farah, I do really like. She is a great main character. And I do really like Bryce. Bryce is kind of a mixture, in my opinion, of Selena and Farah because, you know, she is very guarded and very, you know, resilient and kind of arrogant and puts on a facade much like Selena, but she's also very emotional and wears her heart in her sleeve and she loves big like Farah, which I guess Selena does too. Either way. Um, I do like Bryce though. You know, it takes time to get used to her. She puts up a facade of like a party girl, but she's much more in depth. I loved, loved, love the relationship between her and her best friend Danica and the fact that I got ripped away at the beginning of the book because I was already emotional emotionally invested in Danica, Danica, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, by like 50 pages. I was like, I, I love this character. And then she got freaking ripped away. <laughs> I was like, great. <laughs> but I love that it shows it was this was a book where it really talked a lot about grief, especially I love that this was a book that talked a lot about grief and how when somebody's ripped away from you, how it affects you and how it's not something that you get over easily at all. Sometimes I think with books and with shows, especially with fantasy books, we brush past it. Oh, they died. It's let's whatever. No, it's going to be a part of you forever. This is going to be a it's going to be a grief sized hole in your heart forever that I don't think will ever fill. And it's not supposed to fill. You just have to learn how to live with it every day. And yes, it becomes easier easier but it's always going to be there and this book really touched on that and I really liked how we saw Bryce's grief how it really affected her because that was like her sister her best friend it was like the other half of her heart quit essentially and it wasn't like you know like I said this book started with her with Danica's death and then we flash forward to two years later it's still very very much affecting Bryce a lot and she just can't let it go and she never wants to let it go and she deals with this pain because she feels like this pain goes away then Danica will go away and it's just I really enjoyed that because I really feel like it was a true depiction of grief I very fortunately have not lost someone that that close to me so I can't speak on that matter for you um if you you know have lost someone very very close to you I'd love to know if you think that this book I would love to know if you think this book is an act uh true de depiction of grief did this really represent you as far as your grief concerns I can't speak on that because I haven't lost anybody as close like Bryce and Danica had so but I do like that they really focused on that and that I think that's really big character growth and a really big part of life honestly I also love the fact that this whole book kind of really revolves around the lower class systems like the half breeds things like that they're frowned upon in this world they can't ever have true powers they can't be mated da da da, da. and this whole book's kind of overcoming that and showing that anybody can have power and things like that I like that a lot I also love Hunt Hunt was a great character he was you know your typical so I say YA, but no, even just a typical love interest, brooding and dark and I have a hard exterior and a very tragic past. But the more you get to know him, the more you fall in love with him and just want to keep him forever. The side characters were amazing. Bryce, yes, had Danica, but she also had two other really good friends, Juniper, who I loved, and also Fury, who, you know, and she also had these, like a, a fire sprite, is that how you say it, um, that worked with her and she loved her. I loved that relationship. She also had a pet Chimera. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I am so sorry. I had to like Google that to figure out what it looked like. Name Sphinx. It was just, uh, and Bryce's relationship with her um, brother Rune. I really enjoyed that. I was very wary of Rune at first, but I didn't know what his motives were or what his, you know, is he going to try to really um, hurt Bryce, things like that. But I really loved how he turned out and I love watching the relationship between Bryce and Rune. I thought it was beautiful. Um, yeah, spo so overall, I love this book. It's my favorite book of the year right now. I don't see a lot of things knocking it down. Does that make me trash? I don't know, but I really enjoyed it. I have such a good time reading Sarah J. Mass's books, and this really got me in the fantasy mood because this is the first fantasy book I've read all year, and boy, do other fantasy books I read this year have a lot to live with. <laughs> Up to. I've been out of a fantasy, I've been in a fantasy slump for a while now. I just kind of feel myself going away from the genre, but this really pulled me right back in. And especially with urban fantasy, I can't tell you the last time I've read an urban fantasy. I want to say it's been since City of Bones, which was like 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's been it's been a while <laughs> but I'm interested in more urban fantasy series if you know of any let me know I'm thinking about checking out the dark lover series by J.R. Ward is that a good idea or not 
let me know. But I really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of supernatural things like werewolves, vampires. If you want them all, this book's got them all. And it's a series, so I can only imagine she's going to really um, hone in on different, you know, supernatural um, elements in the future. So I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, I don't want to spoil this book for you because I'm not, I, I think the ending was really good. It was a nice twist, but I think a lot of us saw, saw it coming in a way. Um, but I enjoyed the ending. I had no problems with it. I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Hope she keeps my ship together. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to spoil it because I think this is just a first book in the series. I don't want to spoil it. I'll definitely be spoiling this books in the future because you have to read this one first. So yeah, no spoilers in this video. Is that weird? I don't know. So either way, I just want to introduce you to this book. If you want to read it, great. If you don't, great. Either way, great. I really enjoyed it and I'm very, very happy to have read it and I'm very happy to say I read an 800 page book in six days. Who am I? What am I? How have I done this? I don't know. I was addicted to it. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts about this book. If you do have spoilers, that is fine. Just make sure you, you know, leave a whole bunch of space in between so people that don't want spoilers can be wary of that comment. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Like I said, leave them in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.